Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to part three of this Gyroflow video series. Uh, Gyroflow just put out a new release of their software, version 1.0.0, and man, this software is awesome. In part one, we talked about stabilizing your raw GoPro data uh, in place of real steady Go. In part two, I showed you how to stabilize your DVR footage using your flight controller data. And in part three, we're gonna take a look at uh, applying additional stabilization to footage that already had HyperSmooth on it. So let's dive in and take a look. Okay, so what is Gyroflow? It's an advanced open source gyro assisted video stabilization for cinematography, drone video, and much more. Gyroflow has been around since 2020, but the all new version is so much easier to use and it's not fiddly. It's really awesome. Right out of the box, you install it, you can start using it right now. This software is packed with a ton of features. It has more features than Real Steady Go and it works with almost any camera and gyro combination. So you can use it with your cinema camera. You could use it with your GoPro. You can use it with a run cam. You can use it with your Sony camera. You can use it with almost anything that has gyro data or you can add gyro data and match it with any camera. So like I said, this is a multi-part video series. This is part three and in this part we are going to explore Stabilizing footage has already been stabilized. So if you're using something like an Insta360 GO 2 or you're using a GoPro and you're running hyper smooth, you may have a need from time to time where you want to add additional stabilization or to iron out some bumps. So the really cool part about this new version of Gyroflow is it does allow you to use hyper smooth footage. Real Steady Go currently does not. They say they're going to in the 2.0 release, but uh, right now this software is free and available and it is much better than the previous version. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and try to import a file that's already been stabilized using HyperSmooth. So this is uh, the standard HyperSmooth in camera. Now if you've done this in Real Steady Go, you'll find out when you try to open this file it says you can't because uh, in-body stabilization was already used. So let's see what Gyroflow does. Uh, no complaints there. It does look like it got the correct camera and the stabilization file from the gyro. And yes, so we're in the same stuff here. We got the same settings. We can do, uh, you know, increase, decrease how much. I'm just going to go for maximum smoothing just to kind of see what it looks like. Um, yeah, so it's already synced up because it had a, uh, the synchronization file for the gyro and the, and the film footage was already on top of each other, so I don't have to do anything there. Uh, we can do a playback. Let's skim to where we take off. Somewhere in here. Yeah, and you can tell it's cropped in quite a bit. Uh, the way I have this set, it's cropped in quite a bit. I'll go ahead and turn this sound off. Um, yeah, and, and that's because the way I have it set here, you can also set, uh, again, these settings for uh, no cropping, but then you have to manually use your field of view to uh, you know, move around where you want to be. You can set it to dynamic. Uh, in this case, I am going to go ahead and set it to dynamic. Um, and like I said, if you do mess with this field of view, you'll see right away um, because we're on dynamic, it was already kind of snapped into the safe zone there. So we'll go ahead and put this back to one. And yeah, definitely looks smooth. You, again, you can toggle off and on what it looks like right here. So this is the hyper smooth. You can see we're losing a lot of the field of view by doing it the way that I'm doing it. Um, but we're just looking at, you know, worst case scenario. Could we add some extra stabilization to this footage? Of course we can. So um, and we can dial it back so the crop isn't so intense, you know. Um, the further back we pull these numbers, um, the less we're going to be cropping in. So, I mean, we could just, we could just improve it maybe a little bit. Try that, see what this looks like. So let's see if there's a noticeable difference here. I mean, it's already pretty smooth because hyper smooth is already on. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, render this out. It is nice to know that you could further stabilize your footage if you needed to, if you had HyperSmooth on, which is not an option with Real Steady. So, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, cut to the end here and set an out point, and we will go ahead and render this out, and it does go to the same location as your file. So this is what the final result ends up looking like. Like I said, this footage was already pretty smooth. This just kind of irons out some of the extras. Uh, I do encourage you guys to play with the settings to see what works best for you. Um, you know, 
Some people say, why do you need to use it if you already have HyperSmooth? Well, maybe there's something you're doing for a professional job or something and you need to iron out a few of the bugs. So yeah, this is a great option for you. Um, like I said, guys, this software is free. If you do enjoy it, I encourage you to make a donation to the developers. They did a really great job on this. And as always, if you like this video, uh, please leave a comment, hit the thumbs up, and uh, subscribe to the channel.